there's no doubt in my mind that you know who Joe Rogan is. As podcaster, I certainly do. He has uh, become the largest podcast ever and uh, potentially the largest media platform ever. And it's all surprising and incredible and amazing and unexpected, which I guess is the same as surprising. Uh, but regardless of how you think or feel about him, he's having this outsized impact on the world, but more importantly, on his community. And while Joe Rogan has many communities that he could probably or does claim or associate with, uh, specifically, I'm talking about the world of stand-up comedy. And what he has essentially done, whether or not he actually set out to in the first place to do it, but what he's done is a one in a million thing. And it's a fascinating case study. What I want to quickly share with you, because I think it's germane to what it is that I am working on. So he's been a stand-up comic since I think he was in his early 20s and uh, went on to do lots of other things. But pretty early on, once he became somebody who could be a headliner at different comedy clubs across the country, he realized that his life was way better when he would bring other comedians that he had good relationships with along on the road with him to do these shows. Now, that meant a couple of things. That meant he was going to make less money because instead of just paying a local comedian, if he was going to Los Angeles, for example, instead of paying a local comedian to come and do the opening act and then the middle act, and then he would be the headliner, he would bring these folks with him. And he just realized that my life will be better. It'll be more enjoyable. Being on the road will be better. It'll be good for these people that I know to amplify their voices and all of these things. So he recognized, I think, the value of community. And there's a very famous spot in Los Angeles called the Comedy Store. It's kind of like Mecca when it comes to stand-up um, comedy. And he began to really build community there as well. And uh, so he spent a lot of time investing in a lot of the other comedians. And then when COVID hit, he just was unable to do his favorite art form, which is stand-up comedy. And that mo uh, motivated him to move to Austin, Texas. So what... He started to put together, I think at that point, was his overarching vision. COVID gave us the opportunity to do a lot of, of introspection and a lot of thinking, and he put his vision into actual reality. So he was building this massive podcast, this huge following, um, but he recognized, okay, if we're not going to be able to do this in LA, can we do it in Texas. And so he ended up building a comedian's comedy club. It's called the Comedy Mothership. And it just opened up, I think, at the end of last year, the beginning of this year. And it is this wonderful ecosystem for comedians. But more than that is he brings on, at least once a week, some somewhat unknown or obscure comedian that he knows to be extremely talented and on the way up and gives them the opportunity to be exposed to hundreds of millions of people by being on his podcast. So it's this beautiful abundance that he is living under and operating under that not many people have. And it's true in every field, in, in every line of work, Certainly with stand-up comedy, it used to be that there were only a couple of different ways to really get famous. The first was to go on The Tonight Show, to sit down with Johnny Carson, and to have Johnny you know, come and invite you to come sit down next to him and, and talk a little bit longer. And the idea was this will be a great springboard to getting a sitcom. And back in the day, there were only three networks, ABC, NBC, and CBS. So there are just not that many spots. But here we are today where we have an unlimited number of networks. And now CBS and NBC and ABC are sort of afterthoughts when it comes to YouTube and all these streaming services. So there's so many wonderful different ways to get our message out. But Joe's is the biggest. No question about it. 
And he is a king or a queen maker to a degree, because if you have the opportunity to go on the show, you're going to reach so many different people. But he just recognized there is enough. There is enough for everyone. And why not work to foster community and to build others up and to just make the world a happier, more fun place. I almost said funner, to make the world a funner place through stand-up comedy. So it's this unlimited number of opportunities to make people laugh. And so, I mean, so you just track what it is that that he's done. And the only time will tell what it is he actually ends up doing. But it's been very, very inspiring to me. And in a lot of ways, um, stand-up comedy is a great, a great microcosm mirror to what we do specifically to what to what I do because I'm constantly in front of groups of people talking about money and I respect stand-up comedians so much because they're always needing to come up with at least the good ones new material so they're coming up with a new hour every year and then they go around the country and they they deliver their their their, their hour of new material and do a special well from my perspective if I get up and do the same thing over and over again for years on years, I'll go crazy. So I'm always looking to come up with new ways that'll turn into a new book or a new talk to go out and and share that message with different audiences. So from that perspective, I think it just, it makes so much sense to me. But really quickly, and I appreciate you indulging me here and, and checking this video out. Um, I wanted to give you a quick backstory on me because I think it's germane to what we're talking about here. I started... Um, as a financial services professional with New York Life in 2001. Did that for seven years. And then I went into management. And so I was recruiting, training, developing, managing, which I had no idea how to do those things, for six years. So from 2008 to 2014, I did that. When I moved out of management, I opened up um, an RIA. And today, I only do retirement plans. So I do 401ks. But I do that more just because I'm interested in helping working class people to get better at money so they can live how they want. So I do the 401k plans because it gives me the opportunity to work with the participants and to educate and try to inspire, catalyze positive behavioral change. That's what my work is all about. So today that comes in a lot of different forms. I mentioned 401k. I speak to very large companies even if I don't manage their 401k plans, I speak to their employees. I've got a financial wellness platform called Money Alignment Academy, where I offer online courses and financial coaching. And I also do training and um, professional development for other financial professionals individually, as well as agencies, RIAs, big companies, stuff like that. So I also endeavor, like Joe does, to live in abundance. And I know that people need way more help than they're getting. Investors, consumers need way more help than we're getting. I don't need to tell you about that, but I'm interested in helping to close the gap just a little bit. That's really what my part in this is. So I want to help other financial professionals in any and every way that I possibly can. So that's why we started the Align Money podcast. Um that's why I'm interested in fostering and developing a community around that. And I see uh, as my platform, as my influence increases, there's going to be more opportunities in the form of lead generation to training and mastermind programs and helping with recruiting and practice development, who knows what else. But you've been kind enough to be a guest on the Align Money Show, and I want to invite you to be included on our website as well. So that will continue to evolve and take form and take shape. But fundamentally, I'm interested in amplifying your reach. Not that you need me to do that, um, but however I can help you, however I can help your firm, your company, whatever, um, I'm interested in doing that. After all, it is let's fucking go, not... I fucking go. So if you're interested in being included, there's no cost to it. would love to include you on the site. Please email me and we will get you added. Thanks.